An important tool to help students transfer the knowledge that they've gained from doing these activities is the debrief. Debriefs can look many different ways, and a lot of times it's a facilitator preference as to how you do it. One of the dangers of debriefs is that you fall prey to doing it the same way every time. Uh, you know, you ask, so what worked? What didn't work? What did you learn? How was it successful? Who did what? And then if you, but if you ask the same questions every time, in the same way, you start getting canned answers. They start, oh yeah, yeah, we did teamwork. Oh yeah, yeah, we cooperated. Oh, we brainstormed. We talked first. You know, they'll give you the same answers every time. So it's important to vary the ways that you do a debrief. Doing it in a question answer format works. Um, you can also do, uh, depending on the activity and how in depth you feel the debrief needs to be, you can do some really quick ones, like one's called the whip, where it's just, give me one word to describe what you just experienced. And you go around the circle and it takes a minute. That's one way. There's other more in-depth ways that are really great at the, either the end of the lesson plan or maybe at the end of the whole program that you can do. Uh, one is by using blank puzzle pieces. You can either buy these uh, or you can create them yourself using poster board and um, make sure that you have one per student and you give them to them and allow them time to draw, write, put symbols, whatever they need to do to express how this experience was for them. And then once everybody's done, you give them an opportunity, usually in a big circle, to go around and explain what they put on there and why that represents um, what it represents for them. Then, what's great about this one is they get to put the puzzle together and they have a visual representation of the whole class's experience of that activity. Another great activity that uh, you can do that utilizes um, pictures and, and visual, another visual representation one um, is you can use, I use old calendars that have been cut up. So it's a really economical uh, way of doing it. Uh, and it's good to have really varied uh, pictures I use it, there's a lot of nature pictures and um, or cities or different things. I've had abstract pictures uh, and same thing, you have them laid out, make sure that there's lots of variety for them to choose from and you instruct the students to go and find one that speaks to them, represents, symbolizes in some way what their experience was in that activity. Once everybody's chosen a picture, you have them bring it back and Again, go around and individually say why they chose that picture and what it means. What I find is when they have a picture uh, to refer to and describe, that they, they give a lot more detail than they would if they were just asked to explain it. Other good ways of doing it, mixing it up, is you can give them uh, some self-reflection time to reflect and journal, maybe free write, uh, maybe write a poem, or you can do it in dyads, send them off in pairs to discuss what they learned, something about the activity, and have them basically debrief amongst themselves and then, and then come back to the group. So the most important thing about debriefing is to vary it, mix it up, make sure it doesn't get boring, make sure it doesn't get, uh, you know, become a formula that they know and just start regurgitating and, and make it as fun as the rest of the program.